Tomorrow on Home and Family, actress and TV chef Tiffany Thiessen from the cooking channel's Dinner at Tiffany's is in our kitchen. That's tomorrow right here on Home and Family. Axel, I did it. Axel, well, okay. All right, we're with Chef Amy Riolo, whose new book, The Italian Diabetes Cookbook, has been receiving high praise and is endorsed by the American Diabetes Association. Welcome back to our kitchen. Thank you nice so much for having, having me here. Again. Explain to us, what does the Italian Diabetes Cookbook contain, and why did you write this? Sure, I wrote this cookbook because my mom had diabetes growing up, and I had to make all of our recipes kind of jive with uh, the, the eating plan, but also be tasty enough that the rest of the family wanted to eat them. So many years later, 150 recipes that are traditionally Italian wow. from all the 20 regions, but that fit into the ADA's um, diabetes-friendly plan. You know, a lot of people think that Italian cooking is fattening, and exactly. I think it's just the Americanized version of Italian food that has become fattening. You know, the spaghetti with the cheese and the cream, and but but it's not. The Mediterranean, like, is Debbie here? Debbie's yes. not here. No. But uh, the, the Greeks about... and the Italians, yeah, we eat a very Mediterranean where it's just a lot of fish, olive oil, and speaking of olive oil. We have some olive oil over here that you brought from the, your region. Sure, of, this is from Calabria, Calabria, which is in the southernmost region of Italy before you get to Sicily. And this is from a wonderful Autobriatico, which is a, a great uh, single variety olive oil. And what we do, we're going to taste it. You guys are going to taste it too, okay? If you want to okay. taste olive oil, it's kind of, olive oil? Yes, there's a little bit of a trick to, to it. Olive oil. If, you, if you have good olive oil, it's like night and day. Exactly, really? there's it's a really special so procedure good, yeah. to tasting mm -hmm. it, just like you would do wine. So the first thing you want to do is kind of hold it in your hand like this and heat it up. And you're just going to, when you heat it up, this kind of warms up the notes. I can just set it outside. Sure. <laughs> for like 30 seconds. Yeah, that's a, that's a different kind of heat, though. This is going to hurt a little bit. So we're just giving it, warming it up, allowing the juices to flow, and then we smell it. So... Oh, you can just kind of hold your nose over. You see the fruit. Mm -hmm. It's a little, a little bit of peppery bread, a little bit of herb, yeah. a little bit of paper. <laughs> you can, if you yeah. want to at home, you can do it a little so bit more. Yes. This will help you to know what to pair it with because you want to use different olive oils for different things. So once you do that, then you taste it. I'm going to show you how to taste it. It's a tasting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't swallow it though, right? Don't. Yeah, don't and no. Then, no. What? You're going to slurp it back. Okay. Slurp it back. Okay. And then swallow. And you'll notice in through this area. It's going to get a little bit of a bite. You might cough. Oh, it's very peppery in the See? back of your throat. Oh, I thought we weren't supposed to swallow. No, no you can no, swallow you now. Go ahead. You have to do this. Can get a little... <laughs> exactly. Make it sound like you stepped then, on a duck. Yeah, those exactly. are the polyphenols. Yeah. Uh, and the polyphenols that's good. Polyphenols are really good. So they're helping us against cancer and all that fun stuff. That's delicious. Let's bring in the fish so everybody can enjoy it. You can even pour some of that olive oil on your fish if you like while you're enjoying that. So to get started with our recipe, these are spedini alla marinara, or a fish right. kebabs. Thank They're you. from Liguria, no. which Cristina knows a lot my about. My grandfather was born, and my grand, my mommy. Yes. So I soaked our skewers in water. If you have wooden skewers, you want to soak them just oh, so they don't burn. And then we're going to go ahead and just start making our kebabs. So you just put the swordfish right through. Can I just ask a question about swordfish? Of course. A lot of people are concerned about swordfish because oh, yeah. of mercury. high mercury content. But if you look at the bottom of our screen, it will tell you where to go. Uh, they'll put it up in a minute uh, to go to a website that will tell you uh, what fish uh, in what region you can order the fish, the swordfish, so it won't have uh, it won't have um, the high content of mercury in it. Exactly. So Here, the there. Monterey Bay Aquarium there actually seafood, puts out a great uh, little list, mm -hmm. and you can look at that as Christina right. said, and also. Our, the western waters are much better, and this is the time that we're coming upon for swordfish, so um, mm. it's great. Now I'm going to just preheat this over here, so we've got that going, and then I'm going to brush these kebabs with a little bit of my sauce here, which looks kind of like pesto, but it's missing the cheese and the pine nuts. So this is just basil and a little bit of olive oil and garlic, and we're just going to coat it right here on our kebabs. It'll give it a nice flavor and some crust. And today we're using this grill pan, but if you're at home and you want to use a, a portable grill or you want to use your broiler or you got the kids outside, you want to do a barbecue on the real grill, you can do that too. You mentioned before about the skewers and you told us why you had to do that, but how long do you have to soak them for? Oh, that's a great point, Christina. Just 20 minutes for people at home, just so they get wet and they don't burn, you'll they be fine. Burn. Or you can use okay. metal ones. Yes. Or 20, 20 minutes. That's you want to get really fancy. Yeah. Here's a tip for everybody at home: rosemary sprigs. Ro yes. Pull the rosemary oh, off. Oh, yeah. That's really, really yeah. fun. Can I go? When do you use the virgin, extra virgin olive, regular olive oil? Is there a that's a great question, Mark. That I need it depends to on who you that? ask. Okay. And it depends on what your point is. If you're talking okay. about money, people are going to have a lot of different things. But if you're talking about health, like me, I'm going to tell you: oh, always yeah. use extra virgin. Okay. You always want to use it because but you don't want to fry with it, do you? Um, actually, that's a, that's a good question, and it's a common misconception. Everybody says that you can't, but you can. You can? Okay. The 
extra virgin, the term, means that the olive oil has the low acidity rate. So it has to be 0.8% or less. The lower the acidity, the, the higher the smoke point. So you can fry, you can fry with it. But wow. it comes a little bit cost um, yeah, it's sensitive costly. because yeah. it's more expensive. But it's good for your health. The lower the acidity, better for your health, like what we tasted today. Mm -hmm. um, so look out for that when you're buying the labels. And, and anything extra virgin is really good for your health. Think, I like to think of it like medicine, you know, a good tasting medicine. Mm -hmm. It happens to be a condiment for the food, but it's really going to help your health and, and help you to have those, um, achieve those, like the longevity and, sure. and you know, rid yourself of disease. Pearson, what do you think? This is fantastic. Oh, yeah. 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 Were you it. making um, cauliflower risotto before it was like on trend? Yeah. Well, you know, like this is actually something that the on. staff here did here, and oh. it, it's absolutely fantastic. And I do like it because in the book, for every recipe that had gluten in it, I had yeah. a gluten free version. So yeah. cauliflower is it's like a great thing. gluten free substitute. Yeah. That's a great point. So you want to, we're going to be making pesto for everyone. You want to uh, yes. please explain how? So actually, you we're could doing you this. could do this too, oh, okay. um, Christina. So I'm, um, <laughs> we added another basil and then a little bit of our olive oil and some garlic. Now, if this was a pesto, you're going to do for pasta, a real pesto. You'd have also some cheese in there and a little bit of pine nuts. But we're doing this on fish, and the fish already has 29 grams of protein, so we didn't need the cheese or the um, anything else in this. I'm just going to give them a turn. Look how beautiful those grill marks are. Mm -hmm. That's what you want at home. How she knows what she's is. doing. She's from the Gordia. She says I can do the food processor on my own. I don't, I don't need to wait. By the <laughs> she's way, an I, expert. Wanna, I just want to compliment Pearson on catching the swordfish on a swim over from Hawaii yeah. oh, really? <laughs> and providing it for a meal today. I Honestly, just dragging it back with arm. Yeah, <laughs> did you do it with a harpoon like they did in the ninth no, century? No, I, I, I actually <laughs> just wrestled them with one hand. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Of course wow. you did. Yeah. I'm so honored. That's why it's so good. <laughs> So Lovely. I'm just turning a little bit. Here's a trick for everybody at home. Whenever you're <coughs> cooking something like a meat and you want to turn it, you know how sometimes it sticks to the bottom of the yes. pan? It's just not ready yet. So what you do is you take your tongs and you go like this. If it fights back at you, don't turn it. Let it go. If it easily turns, then you turn it, and then it won't break on you. How long do you cook these for? Oh, so don't overcook them. Two to three minutes on okay. each side. Very, very quickly. So they're almost mm -hmm. done right now. I'm is just going to... Is it gonna... faster on the barbecue? I'm sorry? Is it faster? It would be a little faster on the barbecue, maybe? That's a good question. If you've got it up real high, yeah. it could be faster. Sure. But I, I want these to cook through. I don't want them to really be raw like tuna. So okay. probably I would let them go at the same time. <gasps> I'm going to take these out of the oven if I may. Sounds good. Here We've we got go. our swap out ready to go. We're just keeping it warm in there. Now, if you don't want to use swordfish at home, you could use salmon. Oh, salmon. oh that would be great. Yeah. Drum roll, rolled every time. Drum roll, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that at home when I was cooking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 See what mom's knows. done. So what's like really done? Bad, it's a pop tart. <laughs> hey, I got a drum roll for a pop tart. <laughs> We're gonna give them another little coat here of the remainder of our sauce, so you get kind of like a double, double dose of sauce. It makes them a little more tender. And just gives a great flavor. And, you know, think about this when you're at home. If you make the sauce, make a double batch. And that way, if you've got pasta, you can toss it in with that. <laughs> I'm going to put this right over Give it a try, here. Christina. Sure. I am. Good. I hope you like them. Oh, I'm oh. sure. Whoops. She's the real test because she knows about the region where they come from. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm just going to pull that off right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? We're chopped liver. Exactly. Wonderful. No, By the way, effort. I will tell you the complete recipe mm. will be shared on mm. our Pinterest really? page. So fresh. And more on Amy, you can pick up uh, stuff mm. on go by visit her at amyrailwood.com. There at the bottom of your screen. Mm. Delicious, y'all good? Yeah. Yeah. Amy, can you Perfect. Can you cook my house? Sure, yeah. cook for my family. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, we're going to show you how to turn any pair of heels into loafer heels. Coming up next.